This series, Oscar Bevis for the Stomping Ground, powered by Wow Hydrate and available on the zone. Eddie Hearn joins me from Las Vegas. Good to see you, mate. How's things? Good to see you. How are you? I'm good, mate. It's been I'm trying to think of the last time we caught up at the gym, the little gym charity. Yes, event. yes, yes. Still sweating from that, actually. Yeah, that was one of the hottest gyms in the world. <laughs> um, a good place to put them youngsters through it at the time. Um, you just showed me a little view of Las Vegas. How has Paradise been treating you? Yeah, it's good. I mean, um, bit of a jet lag killer. Been back and forward to the the West Coast for the last couple of weeks. And obviously it's two massive weeks coming up. Canelo against Belanga this weekend. And then AJ at Wembley next weekend. So buzzing, excited for the fight on Saturday. We've also got a brilliant show ourselves in Hermosillo um, tomorrow night, Friday night. Um, Rocky Hernandez against Matisse and a great card. So we're going to be flying there straight after the weigh-in in Vegas and then flying back straight after and then, you know, gear up for a big weekend of boxing for Mexican Independence Weekend. For someone who does as many flights as you do, have you got a jet lag, a tip for beating jet lag? You know what? It's like, none of it really makes sense. I mean, sometimes it doesn't even affect me and the last couple of trips have really knocked the bollocks out of me. So, I don't know. I just try and sleep when you can, work out as much as you can, eat well, stay hydrated. But, you know, I don't go out anymore in my old age. So normally, you know, in my 20s and 30s, I would have come to Vegas and, you know, you end up going straight out regardless of the time. But now I try and keep myself healthy and actually sometimes makes me even more tired. So maybe I'll have a night out instead of dinner. I was going to say, you're doing Vegas very differently to everyone who will be in attendance on Saturday night. Yes, yes. Exercising, eating well. Oh, no. yeah, yeah. Sad, um, really. But there you go. Um. Las Vegas memories, have you got like a certain feel when you get to Las Vegas, like certain things that pop into your head of like times from the past? Yeah, I think that, you know, when you go into MGM Hotel and you've got the ring set up there, you know, you've been there before, it's it's synonymous with big fights. And, and Las Vegas has always been, you know, sometimes known as the home of boxing, but it, it's really an important milestone for fighters to have that big fight in Vegas. And, you know, when we saw Edgar go into the Grand Arrivals the other day, He's soaking it up. He's giving it the big one. He's he's arrived, you know, and it doesn't really get much bigger than this, a Canelo fight week in Vegas. So, like I said, you know, MGM Grand, obviously now T-Mobile. You know, we've done so many fights out here with and without Canelo Alvarez. But it's a, it's a great place to be, and it's always got that big fight feel. Yeah, I know he won't want to be a tourist this week. He's there to do a job and try and beat Canelo. But have you told him that he's kind of got to look around sometimes and just go, wow, look at what I'm doing. You've got yeah, to think, the moment you're in as well. Yeah, I think I think they do that themselves, the fighters, you know. They should be proud of, of the accomplishments. I mean, this fight with Canelo Alvarez won't just change his life forever financially, but it will give him the opportunity to go down as a great if he can pull off the upset. Like, you know, from a, a kid, you know, Puerto Rican descent who lives in Brooklyn you know, came up the hard way to change your life in the sport is is key. But to do it on this platform, on this stage, and to attempt to dethrone one of the greatest fighters of all time, like, I, I really like his attitude going into this fight. He's really up for it. You know, he's a flash kid. He's a ballsy kid. And he'll, he'll give it a great go on Saturday night. He really will. And he's really confident that he can pull off the win. And, you know, you, you have to kind of not clutch straws, but against Canelo, you have to hope that maybe he does have an underpar performance or maybe he is coming to the end of his career or maybe physically in camp he weren't quite himself, you know, all of those things. And and, so, and that, they're very possible as well. So, you know, expect a strong challenge from Belanga on Saturday. Do you have to walk into a fight with Canelo with that fuck you sort of attitude? Yeah, you you got to be smart. You know, you, I, I think if you're overawed, if you have any fear, it's going to play a big part. You know, it's a little bit like Dubois next week as well. Like, you know, you, it all seems like a great idea till you make the walk from the changing room and you walk out there and go, fuck me, I'm fighting Anthony Joshua or fuck me, I'm fighting Canelo Alvarez. So if you're weak mentally, you're beaten before the bell goes and you don't want to look at these guys and, you know, in awe. It's a level playing field. And you've got to believe in yourself and you've got to believe you can beat Canelo Alvarez. But it's difficult because these guys have grown up 
looking at these great fighters just be involved in epic moments for a decade or more in Canelo's, you know, situation. So you, it's kind of like, not that you've got to give them no respect, but you need that kind of mentality to go in there and believe you can beat them. How many fights have you done against Canelo? I think it's like, I mean, if you count Bivol Canelo, but we were actually promoting the show. So um, we've had Daniel Jacobs, Rocky Fielding, Callum Smith, Billy Joe Saunders, John Ryder. So they're the fights that obviously we had an opponent that we represented as well and Dimitri Bivol, but he won. Um, so I think we've done, we've done nearly 10 fights with Canelo now, you know, and he's a character, like he's a great performer. I think they deserve so much respect to still be the fierce forces they are in this position of their life with, with the amount of achievements, accolades and wealth that they've acquired and accumulated, you know, like how do you, you know, Canelo Alvarez used to sell ice pops on the streets of Guadalajara. Right, he's now probably made I don't know half a billion in in fight purses. Yet still, you want to train three times a week. You want to do that a day. You want to chat. You want to do the hard spars. You want to get in there and fight another man. And it's the same with AJ. And it's just because they're winners. That's all. And it's not about the money when you get in there. It's not about. It's about competing and it's about winning. And and they deserve a lot of respect. But like I said, you just hope that one day when you represent the opponent, it's just going to be one day too many for Canelo Alvarez and we'll see if that's on Saturday night. Yeah. I mean, you never make a secret of saying that you're good friends with Canelo. And um, when Belanga's bowling about the MGM, doing his thing, being a bit brash, you kind of there looking over at Canelo like, Ooh. I think he just understands, you know, I'm team Belanga this week. You know, I, I love Sal. I think he's such a great guy. I think he's hilarious. Um, and, you know, I think given the option, I think he would always choose to work with Matram. But when there's a better deal out there, like he won't, you know, it's not that a loyalty thing. It's just, it's, it's actually quite refreshing of how straight he is with that. You know, it's like, Eddie, I love working with you. Let's do more together. Oh, I've had this offer. You know, we didn't have anything for it at the time. Right, Eddie, we'll do something again in the future. And we'll go and take this. But it's not like, you know, being slippery and like having little sh shifty conversations with people behind your back. It's just straight up. Wherever the, the wherever the deal is for Canelo Alvarez, he's going to go. And he makes no secret of that. You know, that's why when he talks about the Benavides fight, etc., this is the money. If you want me to fight, pay me the money. I'll fight. No problem. You know? Yeah. So you were hoping that he works back with Matram after the rebuild I'm hoping Edgar Blanga wins. Yeah, yeah. But, but you know, who knows what the future holds? I don't think, you know, realistically, how many more years has Canelo Alvarez got in the sport? You know, every year is two fights. So he fights in September. If he fights again next year, is he going to fight the year after? I mean, in his mind, if he feels good, yeah, why not? But we'll see. Yeah. Um, let's talk about Oscar De La Hoya. Dana White's a little dig. Um, even though Oscar said, I'm going to be at the UFC, that's the place to be in Vegas this weekend, Dana was still like, you're not getting a ticket off me. Yeah. Yeah, Dana's not going to... I mean, I, I think that obviously Oscar may be there, you know, Riyadh season is sponsoring the event and stuff like that. And But Dana's not the kind of guy that I think will fuck around with the whole nicey-nicey, friendly-friendly, like... It doesn't seem like he gives much of a shit about what people think. No, but he also, Oscar's different. Like, he said some pretty scathing stuff about Dana. And I'm not sure that's solvable. You know, you, you can put on a brave face, but I don't know. He's just a bit of a strange guy, really, Oscar. Like, I think this whole thing about he's so happy, you know, and then there's this kind of stuff that eats him up so bad, like the Canelo Alvarez stuff, even the stuff with us really and me. Like I don't, I've always said, I can't speak highly enough about the guy in terms of his achievements. And, you know, he's a legend of the sport. I don't know why he feels the need to worry about me or particularly Canelo. Like he uses that platform, that 
Pat back Thursday thing or whatever it is every week to slate Canelo Alvarez. But I don't really understand the point in it, really. You know, use that platform to promote your fighters. You know, Zerdo Ramirez, Cepeda, Munguia. No, no, Munguia left him. Um, I don't know, the others that he's got as well. Like, it's eating him up. So, And I just feel like you've got to let that go. Because otherwise, it's always going to eat you up. It's always going to make you a little bit unhappy. It's a bit of toxicity in the system. Just forget about it, you know. And, um, yeah, I wish him all the best. When we saw you next to Leonard Ellaby, I think a lot of people thought there would be a little bit more, I'm trying to think of the word, a little bit more spice to it because it seemed quite friendly in terms of what you said before. Do you think you could see yourself having like a proper row with Oscar De La Hoya if you two were just like, not something. really, because he's the same. Whenever he sees me, he gives me a big cuddle. Eddie, great to see you. Oh, they're all the same. You know, don't forget, I've never said anything threatening to Leonard Ellaby. I've never really said anything like, you know, Leonard Ellaby said, when he sees me, he's going to slap me. And when he sees me, he's going to stomp me out. But obviously that didn't happen. But to be honest with you, time has passed on that as well. Like, we haven't really had any beef me and Leonard, for probably a year. Like, he said a few things, but there was probably a stage where it might have been a little bit more fruity. But for me, it's not... I don't look at these guys with any... Say, like, hatred. You know, like, any, like... They don't make my blood boil. You know? Like, Oscar, he can say what he wants. I just look, watch his videos and think, like me. Geezer's as well out there. Leonard Ellaby, you know, see him ranting and raving, you know, and it's it's never it's never really personal because I'd probably hate me too. You know, I think I said, you know, I said to my old man, I said it in the interview the other day, like I said to him, if I was around promoting when you were around promoting, what would you think of me when I'm on these, you know, IFL or stomping ground videos having a pop at you? He, he says, do you know what? He want I want to smash you straight in the face. That's what he said, and that's. That's what the others want to do, you know? But that's the game. And that's what I'm out to do. I'm not out to personally attack anyone with personal insults and tirades. I'm just here to try and beat everyone and be number one and ruffle a few feathers, have a bit of fun, create some talking points and keep the interest of the sport going inside and outside the ring. And I think we've done a good job of that. See a few people say that they think Leonard melted when he got in front of you. Do you know what it was? He actually came up to me and he he put his fingers in my back like like that, right? Like he was poking a shooter in my back. And I was speaking to someone and I thought it was just one of Edgar's teams mucking around. So it was there for like 10 seconds and I didn't turn around. And then eventually when I finished my conversation, I turned around and it was Leonard. And I was like, oh, Leonard, how are you doing? And he was like, hey. And I was like, yeah. I said, I didn't even flinch you. I didn't even know it was you. How are you doing? And he was like, I'm all right. So a lot of it is like, I'm sure Leonard would never, you know, I'm sure he'd, he'd have a swing, you know, if he really needed to or wanted to. But it's how you meet people, you know, it's, it's the presence that you have. You know, if I turn around and go, fucking hell, Leonard, what do you think you're doing? Touching me, get your hands off me. Then it all goes off. But I don't have that feeling in my heart towards Leonard. Like, if someone really pisses me off or I feel has insulted me personally or, you know, family or whatever, maybe things are a little bit different. But I'm not that kind of confrontational guy unless you really, you know, it's, it's really personal. And I've never said anything personal about Leonard Ellaby. It might have just sung him a song about Ain't No Sunshine When Tank's Gone. But that's just funny, isn't it? It's just a laugh. So, as always, you know, but he wasn't like, he weren't kissing my ass or anything. You know, he was just being cordial. And I, I don't, you know, I don't, I don't mind that. I think, I think most people, when they meet me, think I'm all right. But obviously, a lot of those videos and a lot of those interviews that are done, people end up pulling up a line from the interview, they don't even watch the interview. Just says Hearn slams Ellaby as I don't know joke, 
or something like that. And that's it. Boom. They're raging. Yeah. No, you're right. So were you saying that? Do you think people presume then that you're a bit of a knob? Yeah, but I've always said it, haven't I? I, I think that it would be very easy to watch my interviews, watch my memes or whatever they fucking are and go, can that bloke's a, he's a bit of a knobby, isn't he? But I think over the years, that's definitely softened to the point where people, I think, I think more people find me quite amusing than think I'm a knob. You were now. a massive meme in about 2020. Like yeah, but I think I was more of a knob back then, you know, like, yeah, but now I don't really, I'm 45 years old, you know? I've done it. I've I've lived it. I've breathed it. I've made it. I've done it. So life's such just a game. It does, you know, and life's like this. It's just what you learn as you go through life. Not every day is sunshine and rainbows, you know, and I'm just, I'm chilled. I'm relaxed. And I, I probably don't wind people up as like, I definitely still want to win. I've definitely got that bullish mindset, but I was, you know, probably a little bit, not out of control, but just so relentless in the pursuit of winning and trying, you know, that sometimes you rub people up the wrong way. I've definitely become a little bit more diplomatic as I've got older. And I think, you know, the the coming together of us in Queensbury and stuff like that, I think it just doesn't soften you in a bad way, but just makes you realise that actually... It's a lot more enjoyable when you're not like this all the time, yeah. you know. Because I spent a huge period. I mean, look, you can see the the grey hairs are like. I actually looked at a picture the other day of when I signed AJ, which was 2013. That was 11 years ago. I look like a kid, you know. Now I'm looking at it thinking, "Fucking, you like an old man." And the grey hairs just for men, just a little bit of just for men. No, I think where are you going? No, you can stick that in your beard and stuff like that, but I think it's sore. So um, I, I just think that, listen, like life, you learn so much in, over the years, you know? I mean, what are you, 12? 26. 26. Yeah, you, you just, you know, I, I read a post earlier before this that 9-11 was 23 years ago. You know, and I remember sitting in an office that I was working in at the time with, with Stella and watching it on TV. That's nearly, that That to me feels like yesterday. It's 23 years ago. It's almost your entire lifetime. Does that scare you though? Yeah. You add another 23 years onto where you are now. Oh, I'm dead. But, you know, what yeah, about but we'll be 60, 68, 69. That's a, you know, of course you want to live till you're 100, but life, life, comes at you in many different ways. You can get ill, you can pass away, you can have a, you know, so you never take life for granted. But one thing you've got to understand is how quick time passes you by. And that's why you've got to make the most of your life and you've got to try and live to the fullest every single day. That's very difficult to do because some days you just don't feel like it. You know, I don't like, I'm not necessarily one for the Instagram stuff. It's like, get up every day. Every day you got to do this. Every day. Like David Goggins. Some, yeah, but sometimes it's hard to do that every single day. But consistency is key. And that's when we talk about people like Canelo and AJ. The reason that they've been, they've been so successful is the consistency that they have. So I think it's impossible and also unrealistic to say to people, every day you've got to smash it. You've got to go out. 24 7 and you know and i was i used to be a little bit like that and i wrote, wrote a book called relentless and it was very much like but as you get older you start to understand look consistency is the key word you're not every day you're not going to get up and live life to the fullest you're just not because life's too hard it's too challenging it's too tiring to just do it every single day but as consistent as you can be is what's going to get you to the finish line and um, just time teaches you so much. You know, I remember when I was 26, what was I doing? I was working in golf. I was traveling around the world. I was going out all the time. Didn't have a clue about life. Totally clueless. Well, I bet you were like loving life then, though. A bit like you, really. What? <laughs> it's true. <laughs> what did you say? But you were loving life at that time, though. Yeah, of course, because... Going out. Yeah, but you, you, you know, it's loving life, but also you're trying to 
establish yourself and you're trying to understand life and you're you know when you get older you always look back on those periods and go oh my god i didn't have a clue but i always laugh to my mates you know we used to go out from the ages of i don't know 18 19 20 21 22 and it was like meet at a picture piano in liverpool street get the train to gents hill go to faces on a friday night saturday night meet in the archers in Gidea Park, straight down a country club in Epping, Sunday night, Charlie Chans in Walthamstow, right? And it was like religious. And I look back at myself during that period and think, like, if you think I was, I was a no, I'm a knob now or a couple of years ago, if you would have seen me back then with the three-quarter length tight black trousers with Gucci oh, loafers, no socks, like tank tops and stuff like that, mate, leather jackets, awful. But I thought I was the absolute nuts. This Hang is what I'm saying. Leather jacket. Who do you think? Yeah, Daddy but no, no, like, but you know, in the in the winters you'd wear like the three quarter length leather jacket, and in the summer it'd be more like maybe some sandals with like three quarter length trousers and like a a tank. Oh, awful, right? But at the time, I thought I was the absolute dog's bollocks, and it's over time you just realise you ne- you didn't have a clue, you didn't have a clue about life, you didn't have a clue about anything. So that's just the the experience of life that gives you to to deal with situations. Like the way that I would have dealt with Ellaby or or, or Oscar de la Hoya in my twenties was so different to how I would have dealt with them in my thirties, and so much different to how I deal with them now. Well, I'd quite like to have a cup of coffee with them and a chat about life, and you know. But maybe ten years ago, you'd want to have a roll around with them, you know. But. Listen, I'm chilled and I'm still learning. That's the great thing about life. You never stop learning. And the same way I feel about what I was like in my 30s and 20s is the same way I will feel in 10 years time when I look back to how I am now. Because the key to life is to keep on evolving and understanding actually what life is all about. And you hope that when you sit on your deathbed one day, you go, I get it now. You know, you just got to hope it's not too late. Yeah, one thing I will say is if you're going to have a roll around with someone, probably don't do it with De La Hoya. Um, quick yeah. one, because I know you don't have all day. Mm. Joe Stevenson, real shame. Yeah, gutted. I mean, you know, obviously signed him and looking forward to the Joe Caldina fight and done his tendon in his hand, knuckle. Had to have an immediate operation. It went very well. Won't be out for too long. He'll be back early 2025 and gutted for him and gutted for Joe as well. You know, listen, Joe... Has he lost the fight for Joe Sorry? He lost the Shakur Stevenson fight for good, Joe. Yeah, Gale. most likely, to be honest, because obviously he's got to fight to Peter. So, but, you know, we look for other opportunities for Joe and he put his hand up and he had no fear and he jumped straight into that fight. So, you know, I feel for him and everybody involved. You know, the Riyad season show, but, you know, it's boxing. These things happen and the key now is for Shakur to get well and, and gear up for a massive 2025. Yeah, just a quick one on next week. Um it's going to be mega. Just listening to St. Joshua said to the zone, still mentioned and still quite keen on the name Deontay Wilder. Yeah. I just think that AJ is just up for fighting everybody. And when he gets asked the questions about people, his, his immediate reaction is, yeah, I'd, I'd love that fight. Like He'd love to fight Wilder. He'd love to fight Zhang. He'd love to rematch Parker. He'd love to fight Usyk again. Of course, he wants to fight Tyson Fury. He's fighting Dubois. He would have fought Hergovic. He don't care. He'll fight anybody. And, you know, he always wanted to fight Deontay Wilder. Obviously, we signed that fight and we were half an hour away from announcing it. But it wasn't to be. But I don't, I'm not sure if Wilder will fight again. You know, I'm, I don't know. For me, I think he's a win or two away for putting himself in a hat with Anthony Joshua. But, you know, AJ don't care who he fights. He's just up for competing. I bet you like what Derek Chisora said on TalkSport. Yeah. Yeah, you know, I mean... People keep talking about AJ Fury and AJ Usyk. We've got one thing on the mind, AJ Dubois. You know, deal with that next Saturday and then everything else will fall into place. Yeah. Ed, it's a pleasure. I'm being told that you don't have too much time left. Can we get one for the fans of The View from the Suite? I want to see what sort of pad we're staying in. We've got, we've got Matty Lawless here hiding. You know what I mean? But this is, this is Fontaine Blue. In my opinion, the best hotel in Las Vegas. So how much are we talking tonight for that suite? None of your business. The uh the bedrooms in there hasn't been made yet, so I'll leave that. But this is the the 
the lounge area and dining area. So very nice, mate. Very nice hotel. Love it. You're a lucky man. Ed, I appreciate your time and I will see you next week. Um, will do. Luck to you and Team Belanga this weekend. Take care. Cheers, boys.